Cards, cards, cards! Every Magic player's got them, but does your collection look like a total mess? All those loose, unsorted piles. Something's gotta be done. But what? Binders, boxes, bathtubs. There are more ways to sort than you can shake an old stick fingers at. But don't worry, folks. There is a solution. Here at the Command Zone, we're big Magic fans with Magic collections of all shapes and sizes. So we've sorted through our sorting methods, and today, the hosts and crew are passing their wisdom on to you for the low, low price of watching this podcast. So whether you've got one deck or 100, you won't want to miss how to organize your collection. Greetings, humans. You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What's up, everybody? You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I'm your host today, Jimmy Wong, and we are diving into a question that we get asked all the time on the show. If you own one deck or 50, organizing your magic cards can be a huge pain point for many players. So we're going to break down some methodologies and speak with a bunch of our office mates here at the Command Zone about how you can organize your collection in the best way possible. There's a ton of really awesome, relevant information in this podcast, so you want to stay tuned and find out. But first, we got to talk about our sponsors, and the sponsors are extra important today because it, having cards to organize is a part of organizing. So make sure you check out channelfireball.com slash command. That is our sponsor. You can just use that affiliate code or enter code command at checkout, and you're going to have access to all of the cards in Magic's history. History. Not just that, you're going to be able to buy them from local game stores from across the country. So you're going to also be supporting the businesses that need you as a customer and you need them as a business because you're going to buy those cards anyway. So why not use channelfireball.com slash command. And once you get those cards, make sure you put them into an ultra pro sleeve, a box, an organizer. What? What's that? You want to buy some organizational tools? Well, then head on over to shop.ultrapro.com slash command and you're going to find tons of products from ultra pro backpacks play mats play mat tube holders card holders deck boxes boxes of all kinds sleeves and binders you name it ultra pro's got it and not just that they have versions of their equipment and products that will match your taste based on your favorite card your favorite set even your favorite type of land ultra pro's got it so make sure you go to shop.ultrapro.com slash command there are so many options there or you can also head on over to your local game store and buy ultra pro stuff because you know they're in almost every game store around the world, you're going to find something that's going to help you organize and keep your collection clean. Finally, the direct way to support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone. We have just revamped the entire Patreon, and we are so excited because we're offering tons of new things that we have never offered before, including for patrons at a certain tier, the chance to play with Josh, myself, and members of our team here at the command zone live on Discord, on Spell Table. There's nowhere else you can do this. We've been had we've had people asking about this for many, many years, and we're so glad to finally provide that opportunity for some of our patrons. And everyone has access to our Discord. We have an amazing community there. You can ask questions. You can also ask Josh and myself directly questions, and we'll answer it. And it's a great community. I can't, I can't recommend it enough. If you're a patron and you're not on the Discord, you're seriously missing out. So make sure you head to patreon.com slash command zone to sign up today. And of course, we dedicate every episode to one lucky patron so this episode is dedicated to noah pickens noah you rock all right let's get right into it how to organize your magic the gathering collection or hey if you have other card games you play that collection too we're going to help guide you to organizing your collection today, whether it's small or gargantuan. And we're going to talk with our staff as well and hear their methodology so that you can learn from what we have put into practice and maybe amend what you're currently doing or come up with an entirely new system that works best for you. But first, we have to understand organizing as a whole before we can even get to organizing. And the first key point is defining a method. So the definition of a method is a particular form of procedure for accomplishing or approaching something, especially a systematic or established one. So a couple of key words here stand out, systematic and established. 
Systematic means according, acting according to a fixed plan or a system. And established means something that exists and already works for people. It's proven. So when you're going to go about that monumental task of organizing a collection, no matter how many cards you have, there are so many factors to consider when you're starting to put your cards away and how you're going to organize it, that if you don't have or establish a method that is one works for you and has proven to work for other people in the past, then you're basically doing something that's tantamount to pure chaos. And no one likes playing against a chaos deck, right? So methodologies have been used all across history. In fact, methodologies is pretty much how we make anything work in this world. And without the creation of a systematic and established method, I wouldn't be here with this t-shirt on. I wouldn't have this microphone on this mic stand and this playmat and this table. You wouldn't have the phone that you're watching this video on right now because it required a method, an established one, a systematic one in order to get to that process. And there's so many complicated things in the world and they're made possible because of a method. So organizing your collection is no different. Without a method, it's madness. The second thing we have to understand when you're going to approach organizing a collection is defining the priorities. So every collection in Magic is unique. You'll never find an identical copy because each card has its own history and its own condition and everything, which means that if you're going to establish a methodology to your organization, then you have to also understand what your priorities are when it comes to organizing because, again, this is also unique to every single player or collector. So defining the order of priorities is going to be really important. So look at your collection, think about what you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it, and ask first, what is the primary purpose of organization? So here are some examples. One, you might just want to deck build, in which case, you can ask yourself some further questions. What formats am I trying to deck build into? What power level are my decks? And how many decks total do I need to build? And so how big does sort of my organization need to be to accommodate for that? Let's say you're organizing because you just want to trade. So in that case, what formats are you trying to trade for? And where are you going to trade at? What do other people sort of want? Can they go sift through boxes or is it easier for them to look through binders? And if so, how are you going to structure those trades? And how is the way that you organize your collection going to help with that? Let's say you just want to protect your cards, you want to store them, or you want to display them. Well, how do you want to display it? Are you going to try and do so in a bunch of hard sleeves, or are you going to put it into a binder that you can flip through? And why are you storing it? Are you storing it just to steal it away so that no one can ever look at it, no one can touch it, and it stays in perfect condition? Or are you storing it so that people can come over and go, wow, what a cool collection, and look at it and sort of gawk at it? And also, how much protection do you want to give to your cards? Are you going to be double sleeving everything? Are you going to be single sleeving it? Are you just going to be doing it, just the card, into the binder? Let's say you just want to collect. Well, in that case, what are you collecting? Are you collecting commander staples? Are you collecting sets like the, uh, the, the cool box toppers and all that stuff? Understanding that will also help you understand how you might want to organize it. Let's say you're actually collecting with a playgroup. I know a lot of playgroups that do this, they have a shared card collection that everyone can build from. In which case, what are the shared group goals when it comes to your playgroup? How is the group going to manage the collection together? Is it easiest in its, if it's in binders? Is there going to be one person that's organizing it? Or are you just going to throw it in a bunch of cardboard boxes? So if you have your own purpose that are separate from all of these that we've just listed, great. But make sure that you understand why you're coming to the table first when it comes to organizing. Now, there may be many other reasons you're organizing, but there typically only is one primary purpose, and that you'll find that that really does influence how you approach organization. So after you define your primary purpose, go through to do the exact same thing and define your secondary purpose and your, even your tertiary purpose if you have one. Some players with really huge collections may have multiple purposes as to why they're organizing it, and then they'll organize their cards in different ways. And when we talk to the staff members later on, you'll really see that in action. You'll see people that organize it because they just want one thing out of it, or people like me that organize it that want multiple things out of it. All right, so now that we've understood what the methodology is and why we need methodologies and sort of what your priorities are. Now let's actually think about your collection. Your collection itself, how big is your collection? This is very daunting for a lot of people because I think for a lot of us, myself included, definitely for Josh, we don't actually know how many cards we have. We could put some arbitrary number out there. Oh yeah, I've got like 10,000 cards, but 
I actually don't know. I haven't gone through and counted all of them. And so actually knowing how big your collection is is really important because you need to be able to gauge something like this in order to quantify how you're gonna approach your organization. If you have so many cards and you wanna put them just into binders, well, you might find that it's not actually gonna work out. You're gonna run out of room. So you may need to think, oh, you know what? I need to do a half split between binders and cardboard boxes instead. So for this little experiment, we're gonna have some visuals here to help you out. But a pile of 100 cards on a desk, think about this in your head, how tall is that pile? Turns out on a table, a pile of unsleeved cards, 100 of them, is about three centimeters or one and a quarter inches high. So that means a pile of 1,000 cards is gonna be 10 times that, 30 centimeters or about a foot high. Now a pile of 100 cards that's single sleeved is a bit thicker. It's actually 5.5 centimeters or two and a quarter inches high. And a pile of 100 cards double sleeved, for all you double sleeve fanatics out there, is even bigger, seven centimeters or two and three quarter inches high. That's actually twice the height, a little more than twice the height than a pile of 100 cards unsleeved. So as you're looking around your room, your collection, and you're seeing those piles of cards, if you have a ruler handy or just rule of thumb to figure out how tall it is, you're actually gonna be able to gauge how many cards are there. So this is a good way for you to start counting how many cards are around. Now let's say you have a bunch of those regular nine page, uh, nine cards per page Ultra Pro binders. Each of those holds 360 individual cards in them. So if you think about it, now comparing the two, you might have three piles of 100 cards, about 300 cards. All of those cards can fit into a single Ultra Pro binder. And that actually, to me, was really surprising because I would think a pile of those cards, that would take multiple binders to fill. But now that we know those numbers, 360 cards in that binder, it can make a little more sense about, oh, I get it. If I only have five of those piles, I can definitely fit it into Ultra Pro binders. If I have way more than that, maybe I need to think of other ways of organizing and sorting stuff out. Now, theoretically, you could put three full commander decks in a single Ultra Pro binder and still have 60 cards left over. So three full commander decks and a standard deck, no sideboard, can all fit into one of those binders. You can also conceivably put multiple cards into the pages of the binders, and I've seen plenty of people that do this. I do this myself. You have duplicates, alternate versions, just slide it in behind. It's going to make the binder thicker, but theoretically, you could get over 700 cards into a single Ultra Pro binder if you don't mind putting some cards behind each other or if you have multiple play sets, multiple versions of cards. Now, looking at something like a deck box. Deck boxes are a bit bulkier and typically not great for storing, but just for reference, our Game Nights deck box can hold two double-sleeved 100-card decks on both sides and one 60-card regular deck in that middle chamber or a bunch of tokens. So again, in a something that big, you're getting about 260 cards, but if you take those cards out and put them down or a single without any sleeves on, it's going to feel a lot smaller. And then turns out that entire the entire contents of that Game Night deck box can also fit into an Ultra Pro binder. So are you starting to get the meaning and reason why we're trying to gauge how big our collection is? It's more important to understand how it actually fits into other pieces and other things. Now, you've probably seen these big, long, white cardboard boxes everywhere. You see them all the time at game stores. One of those long cardboard boxes typically can hold over 1,000 cards unsleeved. So again, think back to that pile of 1,000 cards is about a foot high or 30 centimeters. That can all fit into one of those cardboard boxes. However, that 1,000 pile of cards would also take about three Ultra Pro binders to fit everything there. So the size difference between that single cardboard box and three Ultra Pro binders, starting to make a little more sense now? Very good. All right. So a couple of those numbers definitely surprised me. And it turns out just as humans, it's kind of difficult to look at something and know how much is in there. I think we're all familiar with the famous gumball sort of contest where you look at a jar of gumballs and try and think of how many are in there and guess it. Turns out we always guess pretty far off because we're just not great at grasping it. So hopefully the visuals we give you are going to be a little bit more uh, elucidating. The next time you look at a pile of cards around your room, you can start gauging actually how many cards do you have and what's the best way to start organizing them. All right, so now that you have a gauge of your collection, we would estimate here at the Command Zone that a small collection of cards is anywhere from about 100 to 2,000 cards. So that means a single Commander deck to a little over five binders of cards or maybe two of those large, long cardboard boxes. If you have a medium-sized collection, you're looking at about 2,000 to 5,000 cards. So this could be three to five commander decks, maybe some other formats as well. And then you've got 10 binders or maybe six or seven of those large cardboard boxes. And if you've got a large collection, we're talking 5,000 cards plus. At this point, you've just got a ton of cards. It could be across all sorts of different formats and decks, but you've got a lot of them and you're gonna need some serious storage to be able to get it under control. Okay. 
we're going right through it. We've now decided how big our collection is, what we're going to do for a methodology, why methodologies are important, and also understanding what our purpose is for organization. So now it comes to the very practical part, which is what do you need to purchase? Well, we've already mentioned it, but shop.ultrapro.com slash command, great resource. There's tons of different ways to help organize your collection there, including themed binders, as well as binders of different colors, depending on how deep you wanna get into it. But before you buy anything, I want every single one of you to ask at home, what can I reuse? So there's a story of old shoe boxes filled with magic cards that your mom or dad threw away when you were growing up. Turns out those boxes and many of the boxes around your house are still a great way to store cards. You've seen this as well. Many people will, will reuse other sort of boxes meant for something else, meant for tools, but just are perfect for holding cards as well. So look around your house before you buy anything. Think about what you can reuse and there's a good chance that you can recycle a lot of that stuff. For instance, we used to go to a lot of conventions and at the convention just for signing up, you get a pack of sleeves and you're supposed to use it for your limited decks or whatever, but typically I would just never even use it, put it into a box and put it in the corner. All those sleeves, I never will see the back of if I put a card in that sleeve and into a binder and it's a great way to protect the card without needing to go out and buy anything new. So look around for old sleeves, look around for sleeves that maybe you just haven't used and maybe it mismatches the deck so you can't put it in a deck. Turns out those are perfect and so great for storing cards and slipping in the way because you're just looking to protect it. You're looking to put it into a binder or a box, whatever it is. You don't really care about what the sleeve on the back looks like. Now, of course, you also might have old sleeves from other trades, or you might have old deck boxes or just cardboard boxes, even just regular boxes or even drawers. There are many different places to store cards. Take a look around. Think about that first before you go and buy anything. Here's a breakdown on the main ways that people organize. Cardboard boxes. These can hold tons of cards, sleeved and unsleeved, and they come in many different sizes. If you're looking for a place to store bulk or less valuable cards, this is a great place to start. They do get pretty heavy though when you load them up, so be careful moving them around. Binders. There are binders of all shapes and sizes and colors. Some binders are completely self-contained. You can't add or remove any of the pages and they're easy to open and flip through. Some binders have removable pages that you can buy separately and as a result are easier to organize without having to take out a ton of cards and shift them around if you have new things to put in. And finally, other containers. Plenty of players reuse the boxes that you get from magic bundles or find other interesting solutions to hold decks and extra cards. There are so many options out there and we're gonna talk a lot more about this with our office mates so that you can get an idea of why they store cards in different ways in different places and hopefully that can help you also get an idea around what you're trying to do but wait 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 still don't go and buy anything quite yet because we don't actually know what your methodology at home is for organizing your collection now you probably got a bunch of ideas sifting around your head but to help sort of con make those more concrete we're going to talk to office mates here and hear what their methods are and not just what their methods are but what the process is for putting their cards into their collection and, and organizing it, what the pros are and what the cons are to their methods. And then of course, some questions, if they would change anything, if they would do anything new, or if they have any tips for you all out there watching and listening along. So hopefully by the end of it, once you have all these sort of opinions sifting around and ideas, you're gonna be able to tell yourself, okay, cool. Based on what I heard, I know exactly what I want to do. So we're gonna talk to those people in just a moment, but first let's take a break and hear from our mid-roll sponsors. Hey folks, it's Tireless Provisioner here. With me in play, whenever you have a land ETB, you can make either a treasure or a food. But let's be honest, no one wants to make food. And why would you? Between shopping, cooking, and cleanup, making food yourself is exhausting, especially in the summer heat. That's why I use Factor, the meal service that delivers fully prepped, chef-crafted meals straight to your door. Each Factor meal arrives ready to eat in just two minutes. And with no dishes to wash, the cleanup step couldn't be simpler. Factor makes it easy for me to eat clean 24 seven with fresh, never frozen prepared meals that are so delicious, you wouldn't believe they're actually good for you. I could never get tired of eating their shredded chicken taco bowl. And not just because I'm tireless, it's because it's good. Factor offers 30 options each week, including vegan, keto, and low calorie meals. And I can make changes to my plan whenever I want. Now that Factor is handling the food, I'm free to make some treasure. But you know, maybe the real treasure was the food we didn't have to make along the way. Or maybe it's these tokens, I'm rich. Head to go.factor75.com slash command120 and use code command120 for $120 off. That's code command120 at go.factor75.com slash command120 for $120 off. You know, Josh, having a baby has maybe really changed the way I think about the future. 
Oh, I can imagine. Like, is he going to play aggro <laughs> or control or maybe <laughs> nah, combo? Aggro. I mean, come on. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. What I actually meant, though, is having a little guy rely on me means that I have to make sure that he's safe and taken care of. And that's why I've been comparing life insurance quotes on Policy Genius. If you have anyone relying on you, a child, an aging parent, a romantic partner, it's important to have life insurance, even if they're a Stax player. And Policy Genius is a one stop shop to find the insurance you need at the right price. In fact, you could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. To get started, just click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com slash command. Answer some simple questions and in just minutes, you'll get personalized quotes from top companies. Their team of experts is on hand throughout the process to help you understand your options. And they work for you, not the insurance companies. So whether you're shopping for the first time or have questions on an active policy, you can trust Policy Genius to offer unbiased, helpful advice. Okay, so I have a question. What if your son turns out to be a blue player? Mm, he won't. I mean, it'd be fine but he won't. Head to policygenius.com slash command to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. Again, policygenius.com slash command. Greetings, anointed ones. I am Temet, vizier of Knock the Moon. Here on Amenket, summers are brutal. So when the sweltering sun rises to its apex, you must protect yourself from the infernal heat. Thank the gods I have me undies to keep me feeling cool. Summer may be sweaty, but with me undies light and breathable micromodal fabric, your hindquarters can stay comfy and cool. They have delightful seasonal prints and many styles to choose from. Available from extra small to 4XL. Bring some tropical bliss to your butt with this festive pineapple print. And if you do venture out for a dip in the oasis, check out their new and improved swimwear styles, like these tropical toucans. Miandi swimsuits are soft, stretchy, and sustainably made. Ah, finally the summer sun descends beneath the... Wait, hold on. We have a second sun?! Are you kidding me? MeUndies has a great offer for fans of the Command Zone. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off. If you sign up for their free-to-join membership, you can apply that 15% off to their already discounted membership prices. To get 15% off your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash command. Again, that's MeUndies.com slash command. All right, we are back talking about how to organize your Magic the Gathering collection. And now we're going to go to my favorite part. We're going to talk to our staff here at the Command Zone and ask how they organize their collections, the pros, the cons, and help you determine if you should organize that way, adapt it, or do something entirely on your own. So let's get right into it with our first guest. All right, first off, we are here with Arthur Metalcraft. Arthur, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks, man. Uh, Arthur, uh, audiences watching along will see a massive cardboard box in front of us with thousands of cards in it. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about what is your overall methodology and why you chose to sort of go this direction? What is your sort of like, this is my method, this is why I want to do it this way? Yeah, so I used to kind of do the binder method. I had um, it organized that way, and I realized pretty quickly because uh, I'm in a stage where my collection is constantly growing mm -hmm. that it's very difficult to uh, put more cards into a binder because then you need to constantly like, reshuffle stuff around. Uh, yeah, you have to move a whole page yeah. sometimes. Right, right. So this is a very good method I realized for uh, adding new cards. It's really dynamic and it's good for a constantly growing collection. All right, so let's talk about the process here. So what, how is this organized, this box? It has five clear rows. How does it work? Yeah, it's, it's uh, organized by Wooberg up here. So white, uh, blue, black, red, green. Mm -hmm. And then I've got all my multicolored cards here. Uh, lands that are non-basic. Uh, basic lands, there's a little gap here. And then this is artifacts. So pretty standard, just different categories. And it's organized from zero mana value down here all the way to X mana value and all the numbers in between. Um, and then non-basic lands, I have alphabetized. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, it's worked out great for me so far. Wow, yeah. So you, this is your entire collection, right? Right in front of us? Yeah, that's all my awesome. cards. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the pros here. The clear pro, I think, to me is that you can find a card, how fast you said? Uh, I can find a card in under 30 seconds for sure. Wow. If it wasn't tilted like this, I'd demonstrate. But right, yeah. right, right. But that makes sense. I could go, let's, uh, I want to find the Llanowar Elves. You'd go white, blue, black, red, green, low mana cost up there in the top. You're just going to grab some cards out awkwardly and let's see if you can find <laughs> a Llanowar Elves. Go. Well, I see a bunch of Elves, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they're all, I'm <laughs> looking at, they're all one drops. They're all green creatures or green cards. And at some point, yeah, you'll be able to find a lamp. Yeah, it's great. So like uh, when I'm on spell table, if I like clone a card or there something like that, boom, two different Finhorn and land. Yeah. Oh, land or else. <laughs> that's Findorn. Wrong yeah, way. good enough, good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically what I was looking for. But yeah, that's great. So you can very quickly find a card. It's great, I think, for deck building, right? Yeah, it's 
Yeah, it's really good. Later. To, <laughs> it's don't want to knock this thing over. That would be a sure. disaster. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I'll just pick a color. Like, if I'm working on a two-color deck, I'll just take all my green cards and I'll just start, like, riffling through them, being like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put that card in that, like, in a maybe mm-hmm. pile, that sort of thing. And then when I'm all done and I've pulled aside all the cards I want, like, I'll put some into a deck and then maybe I have a stack of, like, these are, like, the maybe cards I didn't put in. I'll put them off to the side. And then if I have some downtime later, I'm watching some TV, I'll take all the cards that, like, eventually grow into a stack maybe something oh right well, you have yeah. like a little unorganized stack up yeah so it'll be something like this and like it's just a bunch of different colors and i'll go back and put all the green ones in one pile the white, all the red right, in one pile right. like that and yeah and then you just put it right back in yeah yeah so very little upkeep really mm-hmm. good for deck building and super fast for finding the cards let's talk about some of the cons here mm-hmm. uh yeah. i think not terribly glamorous now some people <laughs> may not care about this as a con by the way yeah. um maybe not as great for trading because it's a little hard to find stuff and you sort of flip through a binder and and to that same token it's not an amazing thing for showcasing cards but yeah you know i think the purpose here is that you when you went to primary to to define your primary reason for organizing it was to get the cards in the place where you find them quickly and to deck build out of them right yeah this is definitely all about function um i think there like there is a case to be made that it's okay for trading because you Mm -hmm. could uh just plan ahead and be like i know today is going to be my training day i'm going to take my box into the store i'm going to keep a close eye on it i'll put it back in my car when i'm done and you can just be like do that just keep it with you the whole time (laughs) never leave your cards unattended (laughs) okay okay or that that's yes um yeah, yeah. and then uh and then yeah just be like hey guys like come over like uh take a look at what i've got this is everything i've got and yeah i'm up for trades so you could do it that way um but yeah right. it doesn't look as good you don't you don't get to showcase your uh, shiny cards all in one binder yeah but it's really interesting because i think you're just going for practicality here and that mm-hmm. to me is really important and we talked a little bit about reusing cards here as you can tell or reusing things that you already have there yeah. are all these sleeves right here from different backings and all that stuff and if you look at this yeah. all of the cards are in different sleeves I think that's great. You don't need to worry about matching the sleeves up or whatever. You're just mm-hmm. putting it in there and so you can access it easily and quickly. Yeah, and I've got a bunch of top loaders too. And one great uh, reusability I love for top loaders is you can put your commanders in top loaders so mm-hmm. that way you don't shuffle them into your deck. Yep, uh, yep. So yeah, I've got all these top loaders too. Very cool. All right, well, so is there anything you'd improve upon this system? And I, I, you talked about this is looking pretty full. What happens? Yeah. What happens when you get more cards? Yeah, so I, I started out with uh, something that was equivalent to just one row of these. There are these boxes. So um, I guess I'll probably then graduate to needing more of those. So gradu- mm-hmm. I'll start, uh, I started out with just one row, and then now I'll probably add on a sixth row. And right. maybe I'll take whatever looks like the biggest, like maybe be my multicolored. And I'll put that into its, the, own. its own box, which will then free up more space here right. to distribute and make the rows a little bit bigger well that's another pro yeah. it seems like it's really easy to upgrade based on the right you don't need to buy 20 new binders and match the sleeves you just need another box like this and you can just expand in the same pattern and all that that's what i'm hoping we'll find out soon <laughs> from the looks of it yeah we will find out soon i i love this i think this is a great uh, method for a lot of people to look at and go hey this is really practical and works really well and it seems like it works great for you yeah yeah so on the flip side yeah if you're starting out and this looks really daunting like way too many cards uh, just get one box or two boxes that are about this big and right. see if your collection fits in that and then maybe over time you can end up with something like this but yeah it's great i love it i encourage people to give it a try if it's up their alley i mean you'll yeah. hear a bunch of other great ones too so i mean what i really like the most is that your collection is all in here and this is just a box if you go to my house and you look at all the binders i have it takes up an entire bookshelf so wow. this is a really space efficient way as well to organize yeah. and you found a way to make it so that you can find cards when you need them yeah. well thanks for having me on jimmy anytime great to see your collection in all one place arthur yeah all right let's move on to our next guest all right we're here with ashlyn rose ashlyn welcome to the show thank you jimmy happy to be here always happy to have you let's talk about your overall methodology why did you organize a collection or what was the what was the main reason that you need to organize your collection and the way you did it totally so i have a huge collection i've been playing since i don't know 2011 or something right and so i have a lot of cards that i've accumulated over time Mm -hmm. i also play multiple formats oh okay you're the first person and i think the only person we're talking to that plays not just commander but into other formats yeah i I play a lot of modern uh looking at pioneer uh (laughs) as long as other things and so my system is made so that i can it can be useful across all formats Oh, okay uh because we need to find cards quickly for building different types of decks right and we have multiples we usually have four of every card at least the rares because of the standard format because of standard format yeah yeah yeah. okay so let's talk about your process then how are they split up when you're taking a look at your collection yeah so we have mythics and rares they're going to be in binders typically that are sorted by color and set okay 
uh, just so they're easy to find. And then if you want to grab like trades and stuff for like an event, it's a lot more accessible. Right. And you do buy set because again of Pioneer, Standard, and all those other exactly. formats that have legalities. Have legalities. And I don't know about you, but for me, especially when it comes to cards, if I'm trying to find it, the first couple things I'm going to try to decipher are what color is it, mm -hmm. what's its name, and what set was it in. Right. So gotcha. that just makes it easier for me. Uh, also, we do uh, uncommons and commons. They go into just the white cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a ton of those white cardboard boxes that then like kind of Minecraft style, you put a bunch of them together into <laughs> a bigger cardboard box and it makes like a brick. Of yeah, yeah. I think that's what cardboard. Damon actually has that we'll talk to him in a bit here. Okay, great. Uh, and then lands are the last thing that are separated. And we usually, I only keep the full art lands just because I like the art and I think it's really pretty and I like having those ones specifically in my deck. The rest of them, we usually like either give to LGSs or right. we've donated some here for like draft nights. Right. Uh, These are basic lands we're talking yes, about. Yes, basic lands. <laughs> yeah. Non-basics are sorted similarly, I'm assuming. They are mixed in with like the rare mythic lands and rare lands go mm -hmm. with that binder and yeah, all that. So uh, you mentioned something about this, but you don't actually sort by mana value. Is there a reason that you don't do that? Yeah. So couple of reasons. One, because it's multiple formats, I need, we have four of every card. If it's by mana value, those can get mixed in. Oh, Instead, okay. Instead, alphabetically just makes it a lot cleaner. So you can find it much easier knowing the name of it and just sort and find it there. Yeah, exactly. And plus like, so with mana value, I'm going to remember a card's name more than I'm going to remember the mana value. Like, <laughs> what what is Biorhythm's mana value? Oh, geez. I don't know. It's big, though. But you know it starts with the B. Yeah, I do you know it starts with the B. Rhythm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think once it gets past six, I'm like, I don't know. It's 10 mana, 30 <laughs> mana. <laughs> and then there's the X's thrown in here, and they're like, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> right, right, right. What's X green green and X green? Do those oh go in the God. same place? Or is one, two, and one, three? Ah. Yes! Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so the pros, I mean, obviously, the binder system, it allows you to go through multiple formats and know what's legal know what's the what to pull right um really good for brewing i think right yes oh so good because you can kind of just like thumb through different things mm -hmm. especially with your rare binder and be like huh i do want to make a commander out of this right. or oh i have a modern deck this would be great in yeah and of course good for trading like you said and showcasing I, I love it and we'll show some pictures of course of how it's set up and you can just look through and it looks nice and it's pleasing to look at so do you have any cons do you think that there's some anything that sort of hurts a little bit like have you ever run out of space in a binder binders it is possible to run out of space and we we've I've definitely like grabbed a cardboard box for some. As long as you're labeling things, you're kind of in the in the clear. But right. it can get kind of it's a lot to sort through, especially if you're someone who's going to like pre releases mm -hmm. um, and all those events and getting a lot of cards at once. You have to dedicate time to sit there and sort them. Ah, uh, I see. Um, which is the only downside I can really see. When you get the cards <laughs> in, you ingest it, right? It just takes yeah. a lot of time to, okay, this is this set, this color, this thing. And you're pulling out binders, opening them up, putting yeah. it in, and all that stuff, right? Okay, but I really like this. You know, when, when it comes to anything that you think you might improve upon in the future or dealing with any of the downsides, have you had any thoughts about what you? might do to change things up mm. if not it's a perfect system yeah i mean it's pretty <laughs> perfect no um maybe like someday transferring from cardboard to something nicer looking oh maybe okay like aesthetic upgrade that's a really interesting point you know i, I i've seen people put things in like metal lunch tins and oh, stuff yeah. or like old metal uh, boxes i've seen people use but you're right cardboard is a little flimsy and should you ever get flooded or water oh damage it will leak through because it's not made uh, you know it's made of paper basically yeah it'd be a soggy pile it'd be a paper. very soggy pile yeah <laughs> no one wants that definitely keep your cards above ground level as another thing we'd recommend to everyone um but yeah that's interesting i think that that could be a, a great spot to upgrade how do you move from the cardboard system to something a little more sturdy right i've seen people do like wooden drawer sets and all sorts yeah, of fancy that's things really cool but I don't know yet. Have you ever figured out like what you'd do? I haven't yet. I'm, I'm a binder only kind of person. Okay, so wow. I, I, and, it, and speaking of cons, that is the biggest con because you sit there, you unzip it, you okay. open it, you find a spot and then maybe you have to move some stuff around so it can be a big, big headache. Yeah, definitely. That's where I like the cardboard. It comes in for the lazy part. You're like, okay, we're doing two forms. Yeah. Mythics and rares, that's it. <laughs> when it comes to your binders, one last question. Are they the kinds that you can open up and move a page around or are they open it and all the pages are set? Um. Oh, interesting. Like you, it's a, like the, you clip it open. Clip it open and yeah, you can buy a binder page. To oh, yes. You, uh, you can add pages, I believe. Like we have some of the fancy unzip ones, but those are annoying. Like they're a little said. annoying. You're right. Yeah. Um. But mostly they're the ones you clip and add to. And that usually those ones, you're able to slide in like something on the, the tab of the binder uh, so okay. you can label it and know what it is. Yeah, yeah. So that's great. That's more flexibility. When you open the binder, you can unclip it, put in a new binder page from Ultra Pro or whatever, and let's say you need to put the cards in, you don't need to move everything over, shift everything over. Yeah, and then you can get binders that you like in, in case there isn't one that's available specifically for cards that mm -hmm. you like.
Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ashlyn, for walking us through your organizational method. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, let's move on to our next guest. All right, we are back with Shauna Gillis. Shauna, welcome back to the show. Thanks. Uh, let's talk about your methodology because I think yours is the most, I would call it, official way sure. of organizing a collection. So what was your primary sort of, I need this when I organize my collection? Yeah, I um, I used to have three-ish LGSs in Chicago. One that I used to play at all the time and uh -huh. one that I went to to buy cards. And it was like a night and day difference between they probably had the same amount of inventory, but the amount of, like, the efficiency in which they pulled the cards was, like, a nine-day difference. Oh, between the two LGSs. Yeah, I would, um, the first LGS, they were Graham Cracker Comics in Naperville, by the way. Um, <laughs> I would literally stop at Graham Cracker on the way to my other LGS to pick up my cards for that place. Ah, uh, okay. So you modeled your organizational methodology from that first LGS. Totally. I would just, like, Discord one of them. I would send them my list, and then by the time I drove there, which was, like, 30 minutes from my house, they would have everything pulled. They would have me totaled up and everything. Wow, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the process yep uh, your process is identical to theirs so when yep. it comes to getting the cards organized what do you do so when i get the cards in the first thing i look at is collector number what a lot of people don't know is that the collector number one exists and two they already order it based on color anyway so if you go to like any list if you go like commander legends and you mm -hmm. type in the commander legends list by collector number you'll see that like colorless comes first or white comes first and then it goes by color right so so there's for, an order already to the collector number totally obviously they put a lot more thought into anything that i will ever do in my life so taking that methodology and just using it to order my cards mm -hmm. is really nice for me yeah. so then you organize each card into its own binder depending on what set it's from right so i'll have like a commander legends binder and i'll have a radmica binder and, and the first slot in the commander legends binder when you open it is zero zero one you got and the it the second is zero zero two yeah. if you have multiple versions you just sort of stack them behind each other yeah i try not to keep like dennis and them they keep like four or i'm sorry they said eight copies of each but i have like one maybe <laughs> so yeah it never i never have gotten to the point where it's like it's not fitting in the binder because of how many i have so have your binders ever overflowed do you need to like put them into something else after not really it's more like the opposite case and we'll see that later on when we talk about cons yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah you're organizing by collector number and you're putting it into different binders by set which i guess allows you to really get to that card quickly if you need it super fast so the pros here is obviously it's fast and yep. it's set accurate and i know not maybe not everyone cares about this but some people don't want printings from different sets some people really want that white bird version or whatever exactly. from eighth edition or they specifically want this and so this allows Allows them to go all right this set this card bam in that thing find the number and get it immediately yeah i literally just when i'm looking for a card i type it in the scry fall find the one i like and then go straight to that binder it's oh easy. okay and you'll also know if you don't have that one at that very moment too exactly so it seems it's like really really good for selling and inventory for stores as well right it's great yeah whenever i'm looking to like trade cards in for uh tournament entry something like that i just flip to whatever i know i don't need like oh where's my extra ragavan and then i just ah, grab it real quick it's well, great i could use that extra ragavan <laughs> And this is nice because I think it's really reliable. There's a definitive landing place for every single card, right? Right. Okay, let's talk about some of the cons here. Yeah. Uh, I think this is probably better for larger collections. Yep. Uh, it's very utility-based, and maybe not everyone cares about the different sets and reprinting, but it, you were saying some of your binders are a little woefully empty? Yeah, it's very sad. Um, <laughs> like, some of my... I got in an RTR block, so... Return to Ravnica? Yeah, so back when... You know, those binders, I have like, they have like three cards in them. So yeah. I don't even know why I ordered those binders. Because obviously you have to go through and you like, do like write down the numbers on them. So, you know, we'll have like a little label that says, you know, 001, oh, yeah, this yeah. is the card. And I'm like, why did I go through and label this whole binder when I don't have any of these cards? Yeah, so you open the binder, there's like 50 empty pages. And then you flip through, there's like three cards slotted at random points just yeah. to be in the collector number. And I, I think I make the binder because one day I hope to fill it up, but uh -huh. it's just not... Well, I like that. I think the aspirational <laughs> element of a lot of collectors, and I do this too, I'll leave open spots if I'm like, I need a fourth version of this card or whatever, and I'm just going to leave that spot open even though I have other cards I could put there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really cool. And I, I guess I, I wrote down that it's not good for trading, but I think I'm actually wrong. I think it's great for trading. It's kind of nice, yeah. Yeah, because you, if someone, again, wants that very specific version, and with trades, people are very picky sometimes with that sort of thing. Yeah, most of the time it's just like, hey, do you have a Fierce Guardianship? And they don't really care about the printing. I just like flip to the Fierce Guardianship, and I'm like, nope, I don't have it. Right. Right. Um, right, you know exactly. Yeah. So is there anything that you think you would improve upon with this sort of setup? Do you do you care about those empty binders or are you just going to keep this going for each set from now on? Yeah, I think the only con, it, which is probably a con that a lot of people have, is that just like it gets so hard to be diligent about putting it in the correct spot. Oh, each time. I can get so lazy. Like one of your questions was, how do you, what do you do when you get new intake or what do you do when yeah. you get new cards? And I'm like, 
I just played the Shizune Kapenna pre-release and I just took all my bulk and I just gave it to my LGS. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to buy another binder. That's I right. Just- but here's the thing. You are able to track the commons and uncommons. I find a lot of people with bigger collections, they just sort of don't care about the commons and uncommons. And yeah. sometimes some of those are really valuable. And that was the best part about Graham Cracker is I'd walk up to them with like this Uvenwald tracker, like looking for this random card. And they're like, oh yeah, it's right here. Nice, <laughs> nice. Okay. Do you want this printing or this printing? <laughs> right. Great. So it's a bit more tedious. I think we saw with a couple of other, other, other steps like Arthur, it's easier to just throw something in there yep. but you do have what amounts to a very clear and concise knowledge of what cards you do have and don't have totally all right thank you so much sean that was really interesting to hear how you organize your collection you got it all right let's move on to our next guest all right we are here with mr damon lens damon welcome to the show hey how you doing i'm happy to be here ah, i'm happy to be here as well so let's talk about your overall methodology what is your general process what does it look like when you are organizing your collection so we have this big organizer it's four by three and it fits those long um, cardboard boxes exactly yeah uh, inside of them so in each box i have uh, there's a label on the outside. Some of them are handwritten, but lately I got a label maker, which made it a little bit. Easier. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, trying to upgrade my system. Yeah. Now. <laughs> All right. So what I do is in Wooburg order, so white, blue, black, red, green, I have creatures. So it'll be white creatures, black mm-hmm. creatures, so on, so on, so forth. And then from there, I have two boxes because now as my collection grows, I'm running out of space a little bit. So I have two boxes that, that share two colors. Okay. And then those will have the, the remaining creatures that I need. Then I have a box for just all non-basic lands, also separated in Wooburg order and then multicolored and colorless, all uh, artifacts, all rares, and then all basic lands. Okay. And so that's how that box is all organized. And you may you may be thinking to yourself, well, that's just creatures. How about your non-creature spells? So I have a one of those massive rectangle uh, boxes. Actually, I think Arthur in an earlier section showed yes. his. Yes. Yeah, the so, five rows. Exactly. Exact same thing. So Wooburg order. And I have all non-creature spells, so instant sorceries, enchantments, uh, and enchantments, artifacts. And then, well, artifacts go in a different box. Oh, okay. Right? And then planeswalkers. So gotcha. that, that's that's what those boxes hold. At some point, I am going to invest in a second one of these large storage boxes. I just only have one at the moment, mm-hmm. and then that one will have all of the non-creature spells organized in the exact same system that I have for the creature spells. Gotcha. Yeah, I've actually found that when organizing creatures, typically are about. 50% of a collection just because there are so many more creatures than those other things. Yeah, and that's exactly why I made the system the way that it is right now is I, I was like, you know what? My collection's a mess and it's been a mess because I've been playing Magic for years and years yeah. and years and years and years. <laughs> and just last year, I was like, you know what? Let's let's figure this out. Let's organize it. And I noticed very, very quickly that there's just dramatically more creatures than non-creature spells. Right. It'll consume almost all of the box or all of the, the collection of, of a certain color, right? Yep, exactly. So by splitting it like that, it just makes it easier for me to find any given card I need for any given deck that I want to build. Gotcha. Or if somebody in the office, which happens sometimes, they're like, oh, I need this card. And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I own that. It's really easy to find because I'm like, if it's a creature, is it a creature? Yes. What color right. is it? This color. And then I can go and find it. If Is it not a creature? Cool. What color is it? Great. Then I mm-hmm. can find it there. And- yeah. And you also told me something really interesting you're simultaneously slowly but doing it entering your entire collection into an app on your phone right that's right it's this app called mana box uh my best friend turned me onto it because it's what he uses and basically uh now what i'm doing is i'm going through my collection and adding everything onto this app Mm. and so i'm about a third of the way there uh but once that is done I won't even have to wonder, oh, do I own this card? I can just look it up. And if I don't own it, I know I can go out and purchase it. If I do own it, then I'm like, great. Now I can go look for it. So and it don't just need saves... to repurchase it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, and it saves me that little bit of time where it's like, I don't know if I own this card. I know now where I, I could even... go find it, but I don't want to do that. I can just put it into the app. Exactly. It, it makes life just dramatically easier. Yeah. I think that's a huge pro, right? So I think the pros here, the creature, non-creature is streamlined and it makes a really big difference because you can just quickly go, I need a creature versus I need a non-creature spell. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems like you can build pretty quickly. You can grab stuff out of there. And I think having it in an app as well lets you just add another layer of refinement uh, onto the whole thing. When it comes to the cons, I'm interested because let's say you take a card out and you trade it. Do you have to also always go into the app and then remove it from your collection there as well? Uh, That is something that I would end up doing, yes. I will say something that I've noticed, it's a personal thing about myself, and it definitely doesn't apply to everybody, but for those of you that it does. um, I just noticed over time, like, you know, there's been times in the past where I've sold part of my collection right. or I've traded away things and, and years down the line, I always regret it. Ah. I'm always like, damn, you know, I used to Should have kept it, yeah. yeah. I used to own these cards and now I don't have them anymore and, and that's a really big bummer. So <laughs> this system is definitely not set up in a way for me to be able to just quickly sell my collection or to quickly, you know, 
trade X and Y. Right, because then you have to track it again. I exactly. will say, though, if you ever do offload the entire collection, you've got that text list. Exactly, which is which is really convenient. The other thing, cool thing about the app is it actually tells you the monetary value as you keep as you keep adding things. Oh, cool, and it updates as the prices update yeah. as well. Yeah, so it is. my system is definitely not set up to maximize trading or selling. It's just set up for, like, I'm going to build this random deck that I, you know, a new pre-con comes out. I'm like, wow, I really want to build that. I'll make my list online Mm -hmm. and then I can go through that list and pull out every card that I have and then just buy the remaining cards. Very nice. Yes. I think the pattern we've seen with most everyone is that deck building is a high priority. And Mm -hmm. so being able to get to that process for everyone, for Arthur, you know, it was all just one color and one thing for you. It's separating the creatures and non-creatures, which is similar to what I do. So that's cool though. It seems like it's very optimized. And the most important part I think of these box collections is that it's so small. You can just put it in a corner and it's a box. It's not like 80 binders or whatever else that I have. Yeah, that was something, uh, you know, I've, I've moved a lot the last couple of years yeah. with, with the military and stuff. And I'm like, I really need to find a way to make this much more convenient for me where I don't have just these massive boxes uh, that I'm hauling around from place to place. And, uh, and okay. getting it all condensed into a single area makes that dramatically easier. Yeah, uh, I like that a lot. That makes perfect sense, uh, especially with, with you moving and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So now that you're sort of reaching the end of this box and you're looking like you're expanding... Is there anything you'd improve upon? I think the label maker is a great start, by the way. It's easier for, to read from a distance and you know exactly what's where. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the label maker definitely. Um, when I bought this box, the the big box that I, mm-hmm. I showed you guys, um, I only bought one because I was like, I don't know if this is really going to work out for work, me. Right. This, is, this is kind of a test. It is definitely something I'm investing in more of these. I'll probably end up with about three. Uh, two of them will be full. One of them will be partial. Mm-hmm. partial. That will make life a lot easier. And then the other part that I'm, sort of trying to figure out a solution for is anytime I get new cards, uh, they go into like this unsorted thing, uh, unsorted box. Box, um, yeah. And then from there, I then condense and sort them. If I can figure out how to streamline that process, that would be fantastic. Yeah. So, what I've seen a lot of stores do is they'll have these little play mats that have CM numbers on them or they'll have little bins and collectors that you can just put the cards into. So maybe there's something there where you take the cards out that you want, put it into something else, the way you organize it, and then transport it over. That's not a bad idea, yeah. yeah. I'll definitely look into that. So, yeah, those are, those are the big uh, things that I'm looking to improve on. And then um, I will say the one nice thing sort of about trading is like the other day, Shauna asked me for some random off the wall card. And I'm like, you know, I don't know if I have it, but I'll, I'll go look. <laughs> but it was really nice because I, I was able to find it with just a, a few minutes and, yeah. and, you know, give that over to her. So, you know, it's not too bad, but it is, uh, you know, something that requires a certain amount of upkeep. So it's definitely not a system for everybody, but it's something that if you invest that time early on, it pays off for you towards the That's end. a great point. Making a systematic established thing early on that you can just put stuff into instead of always changing it or trying to update it. Precisely. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Damon. Great to hear about your yeah. collection. Thank you for having me. Anytime. Lady Danger, the one and only. Hello. Stay dangerous. Uh, so Lady, you're actually here to talk about something that's actually a little bit different than what we've been talking about with the other uh, staff members. It's an important part of organization. It's graphics and yeah. cutouts and visual accuracy and, and all that stuff. Yes. So what are you doing now? You just told me you were actually starting to reorganize. Yeah, collection. so uh, right now I'm reorganizing my collection. I have them set up in like the big 5,000 boxes like I think Damon had his yeah, set Damon up Yeah, Damon and Arthur both have those, yeah. Um, and so I'm switching from that to cur- I think like an inch and a half binders okay. right now per set. Um, aesthetics are uh, really important to me. I'm the kind of person where if I don't see it, it doesn't exist. So ah. having that box in a closet I'm like I don't have any of those cards (laughs) so I always end up buying doubles of everything so I have a new bookcase system that I'm putting everything in there and uh, organize them by set and divider very cool so when all the binders are lined up they're going to look visually similar and aesthetically pleasing oh yes Uh, it makes me so (laughs) oh my brain it makes me happy so makes me happy too yeah um, I found a a couple resources online that you can find printouts for the side of the binders the front of the binder oh and we'll have those links by the way below Um, and so you can kind of like look at a glance and you're like okay i have that set i have that set i have that set i think i also might mark if i have a full set oh uh with like a little you know dot or something like that how on about them. a gold star you mean like gold star good <laughs> job you have every single card that you don't need <laughs> and how do you go about printing out these labels and making sure they're the right size and all that stuff too um so a lot of the templates are set up for specific size binders so a lot of them are either an inch or an inch and a half um mm-hmm. i think some of the older sets that have diff- like blocks in them you want to put them in like three inch binders right um but uh, I personally, depending on what I'm doing, so before I had um, in my big white box, I had the card dividers and I would just use like a simple 
label system, like a Dymo label. Or this is Ravnica. Yeah, this, this set. Yeah. Uh, and I would do it that way. And uh, if you're gonna extra fancy, sometimes I'll, I have a uh, a Cricut cutter, which is like a big mm-hmm. machine that I can make like Illustrator files and vectors, and I can use those, and I can make certain symbols that go on the binders or on the card dividers, or sometimes even for deck boxes, I can oh, put them on my deck cool. boxes. Yeah. So I know exactly like what's in it. Uh, or I have a problem with that. my deck boxes where I don't know what's in half of them. Yeah, because like I have to a... open it, pull out the commander, and go, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and I put it away, and yeah. like I'll never remember that again. <laughs> there's only, only I know there's a lot of colors of deck boxes, but like personally, I'm like I only like a handful of colors yeah. of anything. <laughs> so I'm like I'm gonna get the same color of everything, and right. then. I'll just put like a label or a certain like symbol on it that I know is like know Corvold or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the pros. Obviously, it looks great. Aesthetics, one hundo. Yeah, you so don't, good. You don't need to stress like I do when I have a Sharpie out and I'm about to write on something. I start sweating because I go, oh no, what if my handwriting isn't consistent across the five things that I do this on? Yeah, it would drive me, it, it does drive me crazy. And I have done it and I have been there. Or I'll spell it wrong. And then I'm like, Ooh. well, I just ruined this whole thing. So like, <laughs> And everyone's going to look at me and laugh because I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Nobody's ever going to see it, but I, <laughs> I am my own worst critic. Um, yeah. So the pros of it is it's going to be super legible. You'll at a glance be able to look at everything and know exactly what it is or yeah, exactly where to convenient. find it. Yeah. Um, it's less confusing than like some people, like all of my binders are by set, but some people do it by color. So maybe right. they have a red binder and they have all their red cards in it. And then I'm like, well, I need that red card from this set at this. And I'm like, oh, How so I'm going to get it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. I don't have to, I want to make it as clear as possible. Um, and it, like I said, it just makes everything super easy to find. Right. Yeah. I'd say maybe the cons are pretty easy to understand. It requires extra materials. Yeah. A, extra time, extra materials, extra money. Um, so it's more of like, a long haul process. I'm not doing it all at the same time because oh right. my gosh, it would be so expensive. It would take a long time too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's for me aesthetically, like I said, if it's in a closet, I will not go look for it. Right. It's too much work for me. But if it's out and I can look at it and also I can appreciate it uh-huh. because yeah, yeah. I love the art of cards. And so if I can just look at it, I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. I love all these things. And I can like pick it out, like pick something out and maybe mm-hmm. just glance at the binder. And I'm like, oh, that's super inspiring. Let me go ahead and make something about that. Yeah, I like that a lot because like, especially with these more recent sets like Kamigawa with all those special art mm-hmm. frames, it's really cool to see them together Yes, and to see them displayed out that way. So I really do like that method of doing it by set, even if that's not what I personally do. Mm-hmm. I think the only other con is that once you start, you can't stop. Yeah, but it makes it <laughs> easy because if you if you start from the, your oldest set and you move forward, you just grab a new binder and then you slot them all in. Print it out, put it so, in, and then yeah. you're done, yeah. And so I think Shauna also uh, maybe does hers by yep. numbers. So you can still do that same way in the binder, set by numbers, and it's just in a binder as opposed to a box. Very nice. Well, how what percentage are, do you think you're done organizing that big old box? Oh, oh no, not even close. I think I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm on binder number one. Nice. Perfect. Well, you all got to start somewhere. But that's great. I, I'm a big fan of the aesthetically pleasing. And I think that's an important thing because a lot of players out there as well probably feel the same way. I do recommend um, if you are sorting your cards, do it at a car. Like, do it on a table. Because I've done it ah. on the floor, hunched over for hours. Ooh. And it's miserable. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Take yeah. care of yourself. Take breaks. Drink water. That's a good Paul. Yeah. And the more space you have, the better. So that you, you don't just sort of start putting things together. And yeah, it gets messy real yeah. fast. All right. Well, thanks so much, lady. It was great hearing about thanks, your methods. Jimmy. All right. One last person to go. And that person is me. All right, now it is finally the last person to talk to. It's Jimmy talking to himself, me. Here's how I organize my cards. For me, I have a lot of cards. My collection is definitely in the biggest of the sizes, and it's only grown since doing this podcast for seven years. And I've actually done the process of reorganizing it probably three or four times now, and I think I've landed at what is my final organizational method. So... uh, Big important fact, though, is I was introduced to this game by Craig Blanchett and my friend D, and I would flip through their binders and find cards and pull them out. So that was something that was really foundational to me as a player and a great way for me to visualize what I was building. So my system is kind of a mishmash of a few that is focused on the binders. So the overall methodology is that I have detailed binders for everything except for bulk and unplayables. So it doesn't matter if it's common or uncommon, rare or mythic. If it's a bulk mythic, it's in the bulk pile. If it's a bulk common, it's in the common pile. Uh, But if it's a playable commander card, then it has a chance of making its way to the binder. So my process is I separate all of my cards into its individual colors. So white, blue, black, and red, and green. That's five categories right there. And then you have the 10 color pairs, the color trios, and then five color. And I consider four color to be five color for for this regard. And then 
similar to what Damon does, I separate each of the colors into its component parts. So if it's a creature, it goes in the pile of white creatures. And then there's, if it's an instant or a sorcery, it goes into an instant pile, then the sorcery pile, an enchantment pile, an artifact pile, and a planeswalker pile. There are very few colored artifacts, so that doesn't really factor in. Artifacts itself is in its own pile. And then I separate all of those into different binders. So over the years, I found that not one binder can hold it all. So I actually have a separate binder for each color. I have three binders for each color. One is for creatures, one's for instants and sorceries, and one is for enchantments, uh, artifacts, and planeswalkers. Typically, that last binder is a bit emptier than the other two, just because, and the creatures one's typically the most full. But I found this way to be the best for me because... I know if I need to find an instant that's blue, I pick up that binder, I know exactly where it is, and I can look through it. Um, when it comes to my lands, I separate it into the color-relevant lands, I'm calling them. So if it's a fetch land, if it's a land that can tap for two mana, then anything that's white and red, for instance, goes with those other cards that affect white and red mana or can tap for white and red. And then I separate it into the utility lands and then the artifact lands. And I... Again, trying to keep these in as many binders as possible. And what ends up happening is I have a lot of empty pages and some that are more full up, but I have empty pages because I know that my collection is going to grow over time. I also know that some cards are not going to fall out of favor and maybe turn into bulk over time. So I want the flexibility to add in new cards and take out old ones and not run out of binder space. I also don't want to get my collection so big that I have to go beyond the current binders that I have. So it's kind of a self-limiting factor too. If I find that I'm running up against the edges of my binder, maybe it's then time for me to go through through, find some stuff to trade away for in-store credit or sell off, and then I can fill those spaces back up again. So as a result, three binders for every single color and about, you know, eight-ish binders for the artifacts, lands, and all that stuff too. So the pros here is that it's really easy to locate something when I want to find it by identifying both what's the color, then what kind of type of card is it, and then I can open the binder and find that card. It looks really great to me. I'm a big aesthetics person, and it's really good for building. And importantly, I've introduced a lot of friends to the game over the time, over the years, and I love being able to pull out the binders for them when they find a commander that they like. They can open it up. If it's a creature binder, then the first few pages are just legendary creatures, so they can choose a commander from there, and then they can go from there. And I sort of sort the creatures by, you know, I put all the wizards together, I put all the dragons together, I put all the artifact or weird things together. Yeah, I sort of find ways to semi-organize it within, but I don't care too much about it. I just want someone that when they want to build a deck they choose okay i'm going to make this commander it cares about shapeshifters they can open the binders they can find the area that has those creatures and then start pulling them out based on sort of what the deck they're building and for me that's the most important part how do you make decks efficiently and quickly especially if you don't really know all the cards that you wanted it maybe you just want to sift through and see some interesting things interesting things that pop up and maybe you'll think of a cool combo or an interaction as a result of seeing those cards together because if you're just typing it into a list you might have a lot of blind spots and miss stuff and as someone that's built so many decks for game nights at this point i've definitely had a lot of blind spots but when i'm sifting through a binder and looking through the options of cards sometimes my brain can spark in a way that makes me go wait a minute that could be a really fun thing to build around the cons here obviously a lot of binders. This is only, I think, a method for a really big collection. You could pare it down and just have one binder per color and sort of do the same sort of separation, but you might find that you run out of space over time. So this is very bad for like pick up and go trading. If I want to go to a convention, I'm certainly not lugging 24 different binders with me. I'd have to go through, pick out the stuff, and then put it into a separate trade binder and bring that. And of course, the upkeep is a lot. Every time I get a new card, I have to sort them out into the system that I've already made. Fortunately, once you do the hard work and you get the bulk of your collection in, it's not that hard to go from there. But it does take a little bit more time because I'm not just putting it into a box like Damon or Arthur are, which is super convenient, by the way. And I'm actually kind of rethinking maybe I do need to do that for some things. But it goes into separate binders. And then, of course, it takes up a lot of space. The collection that I have might be able to fit into two of those big 5,000 card uh, boxes, but right now it's spread into what almost takes up, you know, a bookcase and an entire side of a bookcase. So that's something that I think now that I have it set and built, I know exactly how big it is. I don't need to expand it any further. That is the comforting part to me because I know I don't need to keep going with stuff. I don't need to keep adding binders on unless I'm doing something very specific. So if those are the cons there for sure. Um, but, you know, this is me after seven, eight years of just constantly thinking, changing things, renovating things, moving stuff around until I finally get the setup that I like. But most importantly, it seems that most of the people we talked to today, and maybe you watching and listening along at home too, care about building decks and brewing decks more than anything else. And it seems like the way that you can create a system that you understand, that then you can find the cards quickly, 
is the best because you don't necessarily need to explain it to other people because they're not the ones that are going to go looking through your collection for something you are so as long as you have that innate understanding i think you're in a great place so go forth and organize today on the episode of this podcast we have understood the need for a solid methodology when organizing we've understood our own priorities when it comes to our organization We've understood the size of our own collections and what actually we need to get when it comes to organizing. And we finally understood the types of storage that are available that we will need to use when we wanna organize everything. And of course you heard from multiple command zone staffers as to their specific methods and systems. So what are you waiting for? You now have all the tools that you need to come up with your own method that fits you, that makes you happy, and that makes you satisfied for organizing and getting your collection under control. And you know what? The best way to start organizing is to just start doing it. It can be super daunting. I know this for a fact. So just get to it, put your feet down, or I guess your hands in this case, and figure it out. And it's totally okay if it evolves and changes over time. It's almost like a mini game within a game of magic itself. And that's what makes being a collector and being a hobbyist so much fun is you get to do this stuff and be passionate about it. So I hope to hear from the listeners, to the listeners, what are your keys to organizing? Do you have a methodology that you have and you think is perfect that we didn't mention on the show today or you'd like to share with us? Make sure you leave a comment in the YouTube comments. You can tweet at us. You can find us on social media. And we have great community here. A lot of people will be reading those responses. I know for sure I will be going through almost all of the comments on this episode because I wanna know what you are all up to. And I'm certain someone out there has found a really cool, interesting way that maybe others can benefit from. And it is of course about the gathering. So please leave those comments below. But before we get out of here, you want some cards to put in your collection or you're feeling your collection needs to grow from small to medium? Well, head on over to channelfireball.com slash command and shop from Channel Fireball's amazing marketplace. You're gonna be shopping from local game stores around the country. You can also get some of the best sealed product prices in the world. And we all know it's tough when you open up a booster box. What do you do with all those cards? Well, hey, now you have a method of organizing them. So go out there, get that draft booster or the collector's boosters, whatever you want, channelfireball.com slash command or just enter the promo code command at checkout and you're good to go and you're supporting the show as well. And of course... Ultra Pro, we have to shout them out, especially in this regard. Shop.ultrapro.com slash command. You're going to find so many things out on that website that help you organize from boxes to backpacks to deck boxes to binder pages to crazy cool art binders to very specific just single color ones. Everything is there. Ultra Pro is your hookup when it comes to organizing and keeping your collection clean and succinct. So make sure you go to shop.ultrapro.com slash command and start upgrading the way that you organize your collection today. Or hey, just hop on over to your local game store they're going to have all that same stuff as well and go for it. And also I might mention that shop.ultrapro.com slash command often has great deals on older products. So if you're looking just to get some binders to just start organizing, you don't even care what it looks like. That's the place to go. You're going to find tons of stuff there and some at a really great price. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching and listening today. Uh, big thanks to everyone here at the Command Zone, especially those that appeared on the episode today. But in total, we have Damon Lenz, Shauna Gillis, Arthur Meadowcroft, Ashlyn Rose, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Craig Blanchett, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Patrick Nan, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldo, Grov Galati, Truck Tie, Jamie Block, Mitch Trafford, and Evan Limberger. Big thanks, as always, to Jeffrey Palmer, who does some of our Living Card animations. You can find them at Living Cards MTG. And I can't wait to hear how you organize your collection. So get in those comments, tell me, and I'll be reading them, and I'll be replying, maybe. <laughs> we'll see you all next time, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Peace. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>